Chapter 7, Intonation Intonation is the melody of language, and it's made up of pitches that rise and fall. This rising and falling melody is used to communicate our intentions and our emotions. In spoken language, intonation replaces punctuation. It tells the listener whether we are finished talking or whether we have something more to say, whether we're asking a question or making a statement. Intonation also gives information that words alone cannot give. It can indicate anger, surprise, confusion, hesitation, sarcasm, interest, or lack of interest. If your speech has good intonation, it will be more dynamic and more interesting to listen to. Falling intonation. Lower your voice at the end of the sentence. Falling intonation is used in statements, sentences that are not questions. Sentences for practice. My name is John. It's nice to meet you. Have a nice day. I'm going outside. I'll be back in a minute. Falling intonation is also used when making questions. If they contain question words such as where, what, why, when, how, and who. Sentences for practice. What's his name? Why did you leave? Where are you going? What are you thinking about? How are you doing? When does it start? Who told you? Rising intonation. Raise the pitch of your voice at the end of a sentence. Rising intonation is used in yes-no questions. For example, did you see it? is a yes-no question, since you can answer it with either a yes or a no. But, when did you see it, is not a yes-no question. Sentences for practice. Did he work yesterday? Does he know about it? Can you call me at five? Is it good? Is that it? Excuse me? Really? Advice from a successful student. I don't get upset with myself if my accent isn't perfect. I know I'm making progress as long as I practice all the time. Don't be too hard on yourself if you're still making mistakes. Developing an American accent is a process. It doesn't happen overnight. Sentence pairs for practice. The following question pairs contain both rising and falling intonation, depending on whether they contain a question word or if they are yes-no questions. The first question of the pair has rising intonation, and the second has falling intonation. Sentence pairs for practice. Do you teach? What do you teach? Did you see the movie? When did you see the movie? Do you know that guy? How do you know that guy? Did you buy the car? Where did you buy the car? Do you work there? Why do you work there? Non-final intonation. The pitch rises and falls within the sentence or word. This type of intonation is used to indicate that you have not ended a thought. To indicate that you have something more to say, raise your pitch at the end of the phrase. For example, when I saw him, if I study hard, sentences for practice. Listen to the difference in intonation between these two sentence pairs. 
The first sentence has falling intonation, which indicates that the thought has ended. The second sentence contains rising intonation, indicating that the thought has not ended. I bought the book. I bought the book, but I didn't read it. I finished school. When I finished school, I moved to New York. I'll study hard. If I study hard, I'll get an A. I'm going inside. I'm going inside to get something to drink. Non final intonation is used with introductory words. Introductory words, such as actually or by the way, indicate that the thought is not finished. Sentences for practice. As a matter of fact, I do know the answer. As far as I'm concerned, you did great. Actually, it was pretty good. In my opinion, it's too expensive. If you don't mind, I'd like to close the window. By the way, how did you know that? Non final intonation is used in words and phrases that are listed in a series. The voice rises at the end of each item and falls with the final item. Sentences for practice I like football, basketball, tennis, and golf. I'm taking math, biology, French, and history. I left work. Came home and had dinner. I need milk, apples, eggs, and sugar. I learned law so well, the day I graduated, I sued the college, won the case, and got my tuition back. Non final intonation is used when giving a choice. Do you want to eat in or eat out? Is your birthday in March or in April? Do you speak Cantonese or Mandarin? Is his name Matthew or Michael? Do you want the blue one or the black one? Wavering intonation. The pitch changes within words. Wavering intonation is used for expressing specific emotions or attitudes. Some of the emotions you can express with intonation include anger, surprise, sarcasm, hesitation, uncertainty, disgust, fear, amazement, and pity. Let's start with the words you did. We will say them in five different ways depending on the emotion or intention. Curious. You did? Very surprised. You did? Disappointed. You did? Angry. You did? In agreement. You did? Now, let's say the expression, thanks a lot, in three different ways, changing the intonation each time. Normal. Thanks a lot. Very happy. Thanks a lot. Sarcastic. Thanks a lot. 
Saying okay with different emotions. Normal. Okay. Hesitant or unwilling. Okay. Very excited. Okay. Frustrated and angry. Okay. Saying no with different emotions. Angry. No. Surprised. No? Hesitant. No. Sarcastic. No. Dialogues for practice. Angry friend. Did you do it? No. No? No. Why not?、Mm, I don't know. You don't know? I don't know. Oh, really? Yeah, really. Losing weight. This dialogue has examples of all the types of intonation that you have learned so far in this chapter. Rachel, is that you? Hi, Emily. I didn't recognize you at first. Did you lose weight? As a matter of fact, I lost 20 pounds. Really? How did you do it? Well, I stopped eating cake, ice cream, potato chips, and candy bars. And I started eating healthier foods like salads, fruits, nuts, and vegetables. Wow, I have to say, you look amazing. Do you really think so? Absolutely. Chapter 8 Sound Like a True Native Speaker. This chapter will give you some final important information to help you sound more like a true native speaker. You will learn the rules of how words are connected together so that your speech flows better and sounds more natural and more fluent. You will also learn more about which words to reduce. And exactly how to reduce them. And you will learn the differences between casual, relaxed speech and more formal, careful speech. Linking Connecting words for smoother speech flow. Many non native speakers of English believe that they should pronounce each word separately because they want to make sure their speech is clear and easily understood. This does help their speech sound clear, but It also creates speech that sounds a bit foreign and a bit mechanical, almost like computer generated speech. Native speakers connect or link words together if the words are part of the same thought group. They connect the last sound of the word to the first sound of the next word. Linking creates the smooth, uninterrupted sounds that are the key to natural, fluent sounding speech. If you're making the common error of dropping the endings of words by not pronouncing the final consonant, the problem will automatically be solved when you apply the rules of linking to your speech. Linking requires you to connect the final consonant with the next word if it begins with a vowel. This way, the final sound, which is always more difficult to pronounce, now becomes the first sound of the word that follows it. For example, it's more difficult to say, Burned out, than to say, burned out. Instead of saying, it's a cold evening, with each word pronounced separately, say, it's a cold evening, and your speech will instantly sound more native like, and you're guaranteed to pronounce the final consonants. <coughs> Warning Common mistake. Linking and speaking fast are not the same thing. You don't need to speak fast. When native speakers link words, they're not necessarily speaking faster. The speech is just smoother, less choppy.
It's extremely important to stress the content words when you're linking because this will force you to slow down at the place and it will make your speech more easily understood. Rules for linking Linking consonant to vowel When a word ends in a consonant and the next word begins with the vowel, connect the final consonant to the next vowel, making it sound as if the second word starts with a consonant. For example, hold on sounds like hold on. I like it sounds like I like it. Deep end sounds like deep end. Get up late sounds like get up late. Picked out sounds like picked out. This guy sounds like the sky. Dialogues for practice. Linking consonant to vowel. Many of the words in the following sentences end in a consonant and the following word begins with a vowel. Notice how smooth the sentences sound when these words are connected. Can I come in? Yes, come on in. The door's open. Should I leave it on? No, turn it off. What time is it? It's already five o'clock. Let's take a walk. That's a good idea. How far is it? Four and a half hours away. This is a good film. Too bad it's sold out. I have an awful headache. Take an aspirin. This is my brother-in-law. We've already met. Linking consonant to same consonant. When the final consonant of one word is the same as the first consonant of the following word, Pronounce the consonant only once. Do not pause between the sounds, but just lengthen the sound a little bit and say it with a little bit more energy. For example, she speaks Spanish should sound like she speaks Spanish. Turned down sounds like turn down. Help Paul sounds like Help Paul. Well lit. Sounds like well lit. Black cat. Sounds like black cat. Foreign name. Sounds like foreign name. Word pairs for practice. In the following word pairs, the final consonant of the first word is the same as the first consonant of the next word. Big game. Well lit. Can never. Good day. This Saturday. Far right. Stop playing. Tom Might Book Club What Time Sentences for Practice Both things are from me. Stop playing and help Paul. She's single and she's so happy. I'm married and I'm miserable. It was so nice to meet Tom. Final stop followed by another consonant. 
In Chapter 3, you learned the difference between stops and continuance. Remember, when a stop is followed by another consonant, do not release the stop. The release creates a puff of air and an extra syllable. Make sure that good time doesn't sound like good at time and that help me doesn't sound like help me. Word pairs for practice. Pop music. Good book. Can't go. That man. Drop down. Keep trying. Linking vowel to vowel. If one word ends with the vowel and the next word begins with the vowel, do not pause between the words. For a smoother transition between the sounds and to ensure complete pronunciation of both of the vowels, we insert a short w sound a short W sound after a front vowel such as A, E, and I, and a short Y sound, Y, after a back vowel such as U and O. For example, when we say go out, we insert a little W sound and it sounds like go out. Make sure that you don't fully pronounce or overpronounce the W sound. Don't say go out. Also, don't say, how are you? Insert a short W sound after the word how and link the words together. Go out. How are you? Instead of saying, they are, say, they are. Instead of saying, I am, say, I am. Insert a very quick Y sound. I am. They are. Sentences for practice for linking vowels. Don't say, I ate out. Say, I ate out. Don't say, go on. Say, go on. Don't say, they agree. Say, they agree. Don't say, I know it. Say, I know it. Don't say, may I come in? Say, may I come in? Don't say, so awesome. Say, so awesome. Don't say, I'll buy it. Say, I'll buy it. Don't say, he ate out. Say, he ate out. Dialogues for practice. Linking vowel to vowel. Why are you so upset? I am not. Who is he? He's the announcer. How is the weather? Go outside and find out. Do I need to do it? No, I already did it. Do I say the or the? When the article the is followed by a vowel sound, it sounds like the. When it's followed by a consonant, the final sound is uh, as in fun. For example, the earth, the world. The apple, the banana. Linking vowel to vowel within a word. When an individual word contains two vowel sounds, we also add a little y or w sound. We don't say diet. We say diet. Words for practice. Client. Science. Serious. Quiet. Appreciate.
museum cooperate experience diet Furious. Negotiate. San Diego. Dialogues for practice. The following dialogues will help you to practice linking. Remember to place the most stress on the keyword, usually a noun or a verb. For longer sentences, place the most stress on the focus word of each thought group. Linking vowel to consonant. Practice dialogue. In the department store. Can I help you? I'm looking for a pair of sunglasses. The sunglasses are on the other side of the makeup counter. Oh, these are nice. Can I try them on? The mirror is over here. How much are these? They're on sale for $180. That's a lot of money. I don't think I can afford that. The style is amazing. We're almost all sold out. Do you have any that are cheaper? No, I'm afraid I don't. Is there anything else I can help you find? As a matter of fact, yes. Help me find a rich husband. Linking consonant to consonant. Dialogues for practice. Notice how two same or similar consonants blend into one to link words more smoothly. The final stops are not released. I believe Veronica speaks Spanish. Of course she does. She's from Mexico. That makes sense. When's the big game? Either this Saturday or this Sunday. Do you think they'll lose? I hope not. Keep practicing. You're right. I need to. You'll love it. I suppose so. It was a fun night, but I need to go. Let's stay a little longer. You stay. I'll leave with them. Okay, then. I'll leave, too. Practice paragraph. This passage provides practice in linking vowel to vowel, consonant to vowel, and consonant to consonant. You will hear the story two times. First, just listen. Then you'll hear the story again, and you'll be given time to repeat. My American Accent I've been practicing the American accent for a while now. At first, it was kind of hard to keep track of all the rules and exceptions. I had no idea there was so much to learn. I've been practicing with the audio materials. It's somewhat easier to pronounce some of the sounds, but it's difficult to know how I sound to others. I think I'm getting better. One of the hardest things for me is to stress some syllables and to reduce certain others. When I ask my friends how I sound, they all say they hear a difference in my speech. My boss said that I'm making progress and that I sound more and more like a native speaker. My clients are not asking me to repeat myself as much. It makes it all worthwhile. I won't stop practicing. Now you will have the opportunity to repeat. Make sure that you're linking the words together while at the same time stressing the focus word of each thought group. My American Accent 
I've been practicing the American accent for a while now. At first, it was kind of hard to keep track of all the rules and exceptions. I had no idea. There was so much to learn. I've been practicing with the audio materials. It's somewhat easier to pronounce some of the sounds, but it's difficult to know how I sound to others. I think I'm getting better. One of the hardest things for me is to stress some syllables and to reduce certain others. When I ask my friends how I sound, they all say they hear a difference in my speech. My boss said that I'm making progress and that I sound more and more like a native speaker. My clients are not asking me to repeat myself as much. It makes it all worthwhile. I won't stop practicing. Warning, common mistake, don't pause within thought groups. Don't say, he's at work until 11 o'clock. Say, he's at work until 11 o'clock. Reducing pronouns. In the chapter on word stress, you learned that pronouns are not stressed. When we reduce the pronouns, the first letter is often silent. For example, the letter H is often silent in the words he, him, his, her, and hers when these pronouns are not the first words of a sentence. Also, the TH sound is often silent in the word them. This is particularly true in casual speech, but it frequently occurs in formal speech as well. For example, I love her sounds like I love her. I knew her. Sounds like, I knew her. Stuff he knows. Sounds like, stuff he knows. Did he? Sounds like, did he? Has he? Sounds like, has he? Note, always pronounce the first consonant of a pronoun when the pronoun is in the beginning of a sentence or a phrase. Dialogues for practice. The silent H of the pronoun him. Mary's friends ask about her new boyfriend. Is he nice? What's his name? What does he look like? How old is he? Where does he live? What does he do? How long have you known him? Do you love him? Where's his family from? When can we meet him? Did you tell him we like to meet him? What did he say? He said that he thinks my friends ask too many questions. Do you know Laura Jones? Yeah, I know her. How do you know her? I know her from school. Have you seen her lately? I just saw her a few days ago. I see her about twice a week. She has her dance class next door to mine. Next time you see her, tell her I want to talk to her.
the silent th of the pronoun them. I love eggs. How do you cook them? All sorts of ways. I boil them. I fry them. I scramble them. And I poach them. Do you just eat them for breakfast? No, I have them for dinner too. I cut them up and put them in salads. Study tip. When you watch an American film, try to watch it with closed captioning or subtitles in English. This is a very useful method for developing better listening skills, using the right melody, and learning the common reductions of American speech. Play back some scenes and repeat the actor's lines several times until you can say them the same way. Contractions A contraction is a word that is made shorter when it is linked to the word that comes before it. For example, she is nice is usually contracted to she's nice. Contractions are a standard part of English speech and they're used even in very formal situations. Using contractions is not considered sloppy or lazy speech. In fact, if you don't use contractions, your speech will sound mechanical and foreign and might even give the impression that you're not very fluent in English. For example, you'll hear people say, I'm happy, rather than I am happy, and he's American, rather than he is American. If you do hear, I am happy, it's usually a response to an opposite statement or question, such as, I don't think you're happy, and the other person replies, I am happy, by stressing the word am and meaning, I really am happy. Another reason a contraction may not be used is when the speaker pauses in order to think of what to say next. For example, I am happy. Note, do not use contractions in written language unless the writing is very informal. Warning, common mistake. Don't make up your own contractions. There are specific rules that native speakers follow for contracting words. Only use the ones that you hear native speakers say and the ones that you learn here in this material. Commonly contracted words. The verb to be. I'm happy. She's American. Auxiliary verbs such as be, would, will, and have. He's working. He'd like to go. I'll call you. I've been there. The word not, when it follows have, be, can, could, should, would, and must. I haven't been there. I can't do that. Practice with contractions. Contractions with will. I'll do it. You'll like it. He'll call you. We'll take it. They'll see. It'll rain. It'll be good. That'll be all. There'll be snow. Contractions with wood. I'd go. I'd like some more. He'd go if he could. She'd understand. We'd like to see it. Contractions with had. I'd never seen it before. She'd known about it. You'd better fix it. Contractions with have. I've been there. I've already eaten. We've heard. They've done it. I would have done it. You should have told me. You must have seen it. Note. Americans generally contract the verb have only if it functions as an auxiliary. For example, we say, I've been and I've heard. But if have is the main verb, we don't say, I've a car. We say, I have a car. Contractions with has. She's left.
It's been fun. He's already eaten. Who's seen the film? Contractions with is. Is sounds the same as the contraction of has. He's working. She's a teacher. It's hot. Sam's American. Mary's tall. Dinner's ready. Contractions with am. I'm fine. I'm from Japan. Contractions with are. We are waiting. We're sorry. They're leaving. They're there. What are they doing? When are they coming? Where are they going? Contractions with not. I can't swim. I shouldn't go. I don't like it. Very common expressions with contractions. How's it going? What's up? What are you doing? What have you been up to? What's the matter? What'll it be? That'll be all. It'll be hot. It'll be good. It'll rain. How've you been? Where are you going? Where's he from? Where are they from? I'd like that. Who's calling? What's new? I'm fine. Dialogues for practice. Employee meeting. Hi, Tom. I've got a question. What times are meeting? It'll start at five. Oh, great. I'm glad I'll be able to make it. Who's coming? Let's see. Bob will be there. John will be there. And I'll be there. But Mary won't make it. She's out of town. How about Nick? He can't make it. He said he would have come if he'd known about it earlier. Is Vivian coming? She said she'd like to make it, but she's got a lot of work to do. It'll only last an hour, won't it? Yes, we'd better keep it short. Everybody will want to go home by 6 o'clock. The conditional tense using contractions. The grammar of the conditional tense requires a lot of small words that you will need to learn to contract. For example, the following sentence, which is the conditional past unreal tense, contains 13 short words. If you had not called me, I would not have known about it. Saying each word separately obviously sounds unnatural and very foreign. Here's how an American would say that. If you hadn't called me, I wouldn't have known about it. Instead of wouldn't have, we say wouldn't have. The T of the word not disappears. Or in more casual situations, the have of the word would not have sounds like a, uh, as in wouldna. This grammar point is often difficult for some intermediate students of English. It might also be difficult for some advanced speakers who have learned English informally just by speaking it in the U.S. rather than through classroom study. Producing these conditional sentences quickly and naturally, particularly in the past unreal tense, is difficult for many learners of English. If this is your case, make an extra effort to master this grammar point. Repeating the sentences of the following exercises will help you to memorize the grammatical patterns. Practice them until you feel proficient using them. 
word groups for practicing contractions. Let's start learning to use contractions in the easier part of the conditional past, the if clause. If I had been sounds like if I'd been. If I had not called sounds like if I hadn't called. If she had seen sounds like if she'd seen. If they had gone sounds like if they'd gone. Now, let's practice the second half of the past conditional sentence. You will hear two versions of this type of contraction. First, the standard speech, and then the casual speech. Would have sounds like would have or in casual speech, woulda. Would not have, wouldn't have, wouldna. Could have, could have, coulda. Could not have, couldn't have, couldna. Should not have, shouldn't have, shouldna. Conditional questions. With questions using have, you must add an a uh sound between the pronoun and the contraction. But for statements, don't do this. Listen to what happens with the words you have. Would you have been there? Versus you've been there. Would you have sounds like would you have. Would you have been sounds like would you have been? Would she have? Sounds like would she have? Would she have wanted? Sounds like would she have wanted? Sentences for practice. Past conditional tense. If I'd known it was your birthday, I would have gotten you a present. If you hadn't been driving so fast, you wouldn't have gotten a ticket. If the weather had been warmer, we would have gone to the park. If he'd been more careful, he wouldn't have had an accident. I would have passed the test if I'd studied more. Would you have done that if you'd been in my shoes? What would you have said if she'd asked you about it? Where would you have gone if you hadn't come to the U.S.? If it hadn't rained, we wouldn't have canceled the picnic. It would have been more fun if there had been more people at the party. I would have called you if you'd given me your number. If they'd come on time, they wouldn't have missed their flight. She wouldn't have known if you hadn't told her. Dialogue for practice. What would you have done if you hadn't come to the United States? If I hadn't come to the U.S., I would have lived with my family. I wouldn't have had to study English. I wouldn't have met my wife. I would have married someone else. Advice from a successful student. 
Speak with confidence. I have learned that your insecurity will actually make your accent stronger. When I go on acting auditions, I first do my homework and work on my major mistakes. And then I let go of all that work and just do it. I'm just myself. So if you have an important interview or speaking situation coming up, just relax and let your true self come out. Don't be inhibited. Casual or formal speech. Knowing the difference. Casual speech is used in an informal setting with friends and acquaintances. In casual situations, we are sometimes less careful with pronunciation and grammar. Remember, just like with contractions, there are rules to casual speech. Don't assume that you can randomly reduce any sounds that you feel like reducing. Doing this will only make your speech sound more foreign or more difficult to understand. Characteristics of casual speech. Sentences are shorter and the grammar is simplified. For example, do you want to go sounds like want to go? You had better do it sounds like you better do it. Also, in casual speech, speakers are less careful about pronouncing every consonant. For example, probably sounds like probably. I don't know sounds like I don't know. Remember sounds like member. Going sounds like going. Until sounds like till. Because sounds like cuz. Also, in casual speech, slang is more acceptable. For example, I need five dollars sounds like I need five bucks. I don't have any money sounds like I'm broke. Rules and patterns of casual speech. Here are some rules of the simplifications that we make in informal speech. First, you will hear the standard pronunciation of the word or expression, and then the informal version, followed by example sentences. You, yeah. I'll call ya. See ya. Because, cause. I did it because I wanted to. I'm tired because I worked all day. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know what to do. Let me. Let me. Let me do it. Let me help you. Let me talk to him. Give me. Give me. Give me a call. Give me a break. Can you give me a minute? Did you? Sounds like Jew. Did you call me? Why'd you do it? Did you go out last night? Do you want to? Wanna. Wanna go out? Wanna dance? What do you want to do? Have got to. Gotta. I gotta go. You gotta do it. Should've, would've, could've, must've. Shoulda, woulda, coulda, musta. You should've told me. It would've been nice. We could've come. You must've seen it. Shouldn't have, wouldn't have, couldn't have. Shouldn't have. Wouldna, couldna. You shouldn't have done that. I wouldn't have known. It couldn't have happened. Going to, gonna. I'm gonna go. It's gonna rain. What are you gonna do? What do you? What are you? What do you want? What are you doing? What do you think? A lot of, a lot of. That's a lot of money. I got a lot of friends. Kind of, kinda. It's kinda hot. What kind of car is that? Out of, outta. Get out of here. 
I'm out of money. You're out of your mind. Go to, go to. I go to work. Let's go to a concert. Yes. Yeah. Or, yep. Yeah, it's good. Yep, I did it. No. Nope. Nope, I'm not going. Nope, that's not right. Ing, in. What are you doing? Nothing much. Practice dialogues. Invitation to a movie. What are you doing tonight? I don't know yet. I think I'm going to just stay home. Want to go to the movie? I'm kind of tired. I got to get up early tomorrow. Did you go out last night? Yeah, I shouldn't have gone to bed so late. I would have had a lot more energy today. Why don't you just take it easy then? We'll go out some other time. Okay. Let me know when you're free again. See ya. Commonly confused words. The following pairs of words are often mispronounced and end up sounding the same when spoken by some non native speakers. Listen carefully to the differences in pronunciation. Sell, sale. Would you like to sell it? Sorry, it's not for sale. Series, serious. I love that new TV series. Are you serious? I hate it. Color, collar. Do you like the color of this shirt? Yes, but I want one with a collar. Costume, custom. Children wear costumes for Halloween. Is that an American custom? Bin, bean. What have you been cooking? I've been cooking beans. Of, off. What are you thinking of? I'm thinking of taking the day off. Want, won't. Do you want to go? No, I won't go. Dessert, desert. I had dessert after dinner. They drove through the desert. Where, were. Where did they go? They were here a minute ago. Wonder, wander. I wonder where they are. They're probably wandering in the forest. Warm, worm. It's a warm day. There's a worm in the apple. Woman, women. She's a nice woman. All of the women here are nice. Potty, party. The little boy wants to go potty. He's at the birthday party.